history is rife with intellectual beacons that have illuminated the path of understanding of the mysterious yet wonderful attribute of man, the language. Travelling down time, when we arrive at the 20th century, the Dravidian Indian languages have had the benefit of one individual who has meticulously and beautifully unraveled their beauty. Linguistics is the study of the language. We gratefully refer to him as the linguistic apostle. Professor Bhadri Raju Krishnamurti the linguistic luminary of global repute has dedicated his life to making the Dravidian languages that much more beautiful to communicate in. Professor Bhadri Raju Krishnamurti was born in the one sleepy town of Ongol, now a bustling commercial center in the state of Andhra Pradesh, India. It was in the year 1928, in the month of June. He was the child of Sri Subramanyam and Srimati Bharatamma, a couple who believed in living simple but thinking high. Sri Subramanyam, a typist by profession who followed high moralistic values, was instrumental in infusing in him the discipline of mind and life. Bharatamma, the homemaker, the bedrock of the family, instilled in him the love and beauty of life. It can be said that she first introduced the concept of linguistics to young Bhadri Raju when she taught him the nuances of their mother tongue, Telugu, at home. An intelligent boy, Bhadri Raju was a promising student in the government school where he received his academic foundation. Subramanyam, even though not so well educated, was passionate about Telugu. He had a group of friends who met often at his place who were literary enthusiasts. The young Krishnamurti's interest in the spoken and the written language grew steadily over his formative years, enhanced by this group which made him feel the spoken word. Krishnamurti was an exceptionally bright boy, versatile in all activities that made him popular amongst his peers. The polio attack had made significant impact on his life, which he jokingly expressed. I could have been a commander-in-chief of the Indian Army had it not taken place. Krishnamurti had a penchant for poetry and was writing poems. Soon after his schooling, he went to complete his intermediate course at Hindu College, Guntur. It was right in the thick of Indian freedom movement. Young Krishnamurti was highly affected by this national movement, which was furthered by the exploits of the legendary Andhra Kesari, Prakasham, the inspiration from Ongor. So moved was our young hero that his creative juices flowed in him to pen a collection of patriotic poems addressed to Mother India, but directing them to his mother Bharatamma, titled Matru Sandesham, written at the age of 13. The tender love for his mother was so fine and sensitive that he idolized her. He then joined the Campus Arts College, Andhra University at Voltaire, now known as Vishakapatnam, to complete his BA Honours in 1946. It was during his graduation that Bhadri Raju developed a keen interest in the Telugu grammar and pursued it as his hobby as well. Selected as lecturer soon after post-graduation, His interest in Telugu grammar 
prompted him to opt for language study as one of the first batch of students to do so for his doctorate. In addition, the college librarian of Andhra University, Shri Abburi Ramakrishna Rao, a well-known poet himself in Telugu, encouraged him to pursue the linguistic study instead of focusing on poetry which was his primary interest but common amongst the people at that time. Shri Abburi suggested to him to be different and devote his talents to the study of the language. Shri Abburi is truly his primary inspiration to be the linguist that he is today. Professor G. Somayaji, his mentor and guru, introduced him to the world of linguistics. It was during his course of academic pursuits that he met his partner in life, Shamala Bapatla. This union later resulted in their daughter Meenakshi and their three sons, Nataraju, Indushekar and Subramanyam. His scope of doctoral study was Telugu verbal basis. Then his research material and paper were sent to Berkeley University for assessment, where Professor Burrow and Professor M. B. Emanuel, well-known Sanskrit scholars and established Dravidianists, were the faculty. When Professor Burrow came down to India, B. H. Krishnamurti met him and was encouraged to go to America to understand linguistics and its methodology. This prompted him to apply for Fulbright scholarship. It will be of interest to note that Professor B. H. Krishnamurti was the first Indian to go to America to do linguistic studies. He joined Pennsylvania University where he developed a special taste for historical linguistics under Professor Henry H. Hennigswald, whom he respected till the end and dedicated his lifetime classic, The Dravidian Languages. His association with Professor Emanuel blossomed into a healthy relationship which ended in the student and the guide becoming partners in linguistic study. After returning from the US of A in 1961, he was made the reader in Telugu department at Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati. Next year, Professor B. H. Krishnamurti was appointed to the Distinguished Tagore Chair in Osmania University as a professor of linguistics and continued his illustrious career for 22 years. It was at this time that his administrative acumen came into play that leads to his donning various prestigious roles simultaneously. As member university syndicate for four years between 1971 and 1975, as the director, Southern Regional Center, Indian Council of Social Science Research between 1978 and 1982, as the principal between 1971 and 1973, and then as Dean, Faculty of Arts between 1973 and 1976 at the Osmania University, as Vice Chancellor, University of Hyderabad between 1986 and 1993, the first person to hold office twice in succession. Since he was a good builder himself, because he built up uh, the department in Osmania single-handedly particularly, and brought in a galaxy of scholars there, of course, whatever he did, uh, a lot of responsibility was shared by others. But uh, a leader is a leader, you know. But so we were all confident that he would be a good linguist, a good leader. But we did not know how good he would be as an administrator of a whole university. So when he took up the responsibility of uh, the University of Hyderabad and shifted from Osmania department to be vice chancellor of the University of Hyderabad. One must remember that was a formative year of the University of Hyderabad. It was the third vice chancellor and uh, you know he had very few faculty members, very few students, very few courses, no buildings, practically a barren campus with a wall. So that was the situation uh, where he was thrown in. So how does one emerge victorious from there? That was the main question. And I think he did it very well. In fact, he brought in the best possible minds in various schools, he set up new schools of activity, new areas, new disciplines. You know, the translation studies had been either a part of English department or a part of comparative literature department. 
earlier. It has never been an extension of linguistics. Whereas now you see there are many other linguistics departments which have opened areas or courses in the area of translation studies and they are also working in this area. So look at the innovativeness for him. He said do not do a distance education course in simply physics chemistry for BAMA kind of program, BSc, MSc kind of program. So we did special diploma programs in human rights. Remember this was the first course on human rights in the country. No course existed at that point of time. We had done a diploma program in project planning and appraisal. Where was the linguist, you know? University of Hyderabad during his regime did not waste a single teaching day. They, were, they would agitate, yes, they will agitate, go to city and agitate in the evening after attending the classes. So I, I really think that, uh, you know, he set up a very interesting model of working culture for the university, which is, I'm happy to see it's still continuing with the subsequent vice chancellors. But the model is to be set for a university initially. If it goes wrong somewhere in the initial days, then the whole thing goes wrong. He was greatly interested in social linguistics. When I joined the university way back 30 years ago, 82, at that point there was hardly any rigor in social linguistic studies. Nobody had developed any techniques or methods, so anything could go under social linguistics. Okay, so if you um, if there was slight variation somewhere and you pointed it out, it would be social linguistics. But that's not what it was about. There had to be a kind of route. You had to take some analytical techniques had to be there, method had to be there. So he was very particular that we should rise above this, um, um, what, uh, casual attitude towards research in social linguistics. Although he, uh, he was primarily known for his scholarship in Dravidian linguistics, historical linguistics, but he had a much larger uh, canvas uh, when he looked at language. It was much larger than just historical. So this uh, modernization of Indian languages, what was it about? It was about how language change, change happens, which pertains to historical, but he is looking at social factors how the media impacts the Indian languages, how certain innovations come to stay in the languages. Uh, so you have a range, he is interested in uh, phonetics on the one hand and social linguistics on the other and in between the entire gamut of linguistics that he had. He holds the rare distinction of being able to analyze the language in all aspects of linguistic understanding, presenting a wholesome and balanced approach to the understanding. Well, I think, you know, he, uh, I mean, if you look at his Stravidian languages, it is a great summary of things, okay, and he's certainly um, aware of other people's earlier work and uh, where he feels he disagrees, he explains why he does so. So it's, you know, it's the kind of thing which you get in scholarship, right? And uh, so, yeah, one would have hoped that he had had more time to go beyond what he did there. But, uh, it, you know, I don't think anybody can do Dravidian linguistics without consulting his work. Let's take a look at his most acclaimed work to date, the Telugu Verbal Basis a path-breaking analysis and understanding of the Telugu language. First published in 1961 with multiple reprints, Telugu Verbal Basis is now one of the major sources of reference in the field of Dravidian studies. The Dravidian languages have been studied by foreigners and many other scholars have contributed, but it is the it is the Telugu verbal basis by an Indian scholar, especially a Dravidian language speaker, contributing to the Dravidian studies, which stood as the monumental work and a pioneering work in several respects. Telugu verbal basis <coughs> gave foundation for the Dravidian Etymological Dictionary 
and it also made a strong foundation for telugu linguistics the study of telugu language in a scientific linguistic terms the contribution of krishnamurthy in the telugu verbal basis can be viewed in three angles one is the phonological aspects which have contributed to the comparative study of the language or the dravidian languages then the descript descriptive aspect the verb morphology which became a solid foundation for telugu studies and then the comparative and uh, dravidian studies the comparative and historical studies of dravidian languages by throwing light on the telugu language and its place in the dravidian languages grammar of modern telugu is a colossal treatise meant for linguists in a pedagogical garb published in 1985 it is wholesome understanding of the complex aspects of the language this is almost a complete book complete grammar for the modern telugu language using linguistic principles for the analysis of the language actually it is a, it, it appears as though a pedagogical grammar based on sound linguistic principles descriptive principles he has uh, presented the complex structures of the language in most in a very simple terms giving simple explanations giving bringing out the morphophonemic rules in a very simple way so that the learners would uh, learn the language easily and those people who want to consult for the structure of the telugu language uh, get benefited by this book his um, the co-author gwin has supplied him the data the basic material and based on that professor krishnamurthy provided the analysis and the presentation and the scheme and the design of the book this book also follows the same technique of uh, telugu the verb stem classification identifying the various uh, suffix classes contributing to the change in the telugu verb stems and presenting into a, a comprehensive picture of the language is is presented along with useful drills and exercises the dravidian languages is another key work of professor bh krishnamurthy which has opened a whole range of understanding of the dravidian language it is not that uh, there were no books on comparative dravidian when bh krishnamurthy produced his magnum opus the dravidian languages there exists a number of books on comparative dravidian but his book provides a large number of uh, intelligent solutions to many outstanding problems in comparative dravidian providing solutions to uh, eao alternation it has been a long standing uh, controversy in dravidian besides this he has set up uh, laryngeal in comparative dravidian which provide answers to many outstanding problems in the explanation of why there was a compensatory lengthening of a long vowel versus a single consonant or a geminate consonant preceded by a short vowel etc and besides this he has also reconstructed uh, different layers of uh, derivation in comparative dravidian for example a primary derivation and a secondary derivation and these things have a lot of, uh, a number of repercussions elsewhere in the dravidian research the grammar of konda and kubi is a descriptive model of understanding hitherto unknown languages this holistic model with grammar and text in the original language is well explained by professor peri bhaskar rao who says on the advice of professor thomas baro the famous uh, comparative dravidianist and also a sanskrit grammarian he located the kondadara language uh, uh, 
which is spoken by the Kondadoras in the Aruku Valley area. Till then, we didn't have a, a very highly sophisticated, a well-formed grammar or a description of a minority language of the Dravidian family. The description of a language which is uh, which uh, which forms part of this uh, main book on the Konda language by Professor Krishnamurti followed uh, a, a typical uh, systematic approach which is available in various works of that time especially from American linguists and this has uh, also given us a, a, a thorough picture of the language. Whole of his analysis is based upon the texts that he collected, collected from the field. They were not narrated in the sense they were not elicited. They were naturally pronounced texts. And those texts become the basic part, basically the backbone of this analysis. And all his uh, descriptions which he gives, the morphological description or the syntactic description, it has reference to the occurrence of those phrases, and those words, those morphemes in the text itself. There is a cross-reference. Occupational vocabulary in Telugu is collating the original language by collecting the vocabulary of the ancient original professions, agriculture and weaving. Mandalika Vritti Padakosham first of its kind for Indian languages commencing with agricultural vocabulary BHK 1962 Vastu Radha Krishna 1968 Blacksmithy Carpentry and Poetry GN Reddy 1973 Looms and Handlooms BHK 1972 Fisheries Do Nappa 1973-74 there is no other language in the Southeast Asia, in Southeast Asia to have prepared direct dictionaries on scientific lines. Thus, Telugu got the credit for that, and that credit was brought by Professor Krishnamurti. We were able to collect more than 4,000 words pertaining to that industry, uh, hand weaving industry. In all the 23 districts of Andhra Pradesh, we covered more than 100 centers of field work. We traveled. There were three or four persons. I, I covered more than 30 centers. Going there, staying for three days, preparing the report there itself, and if we get any doubt, we use it to ask the per, uh, informer concerned and send the report from there itself to the editor, Professor Krishnamurti. So far, these dialect dictionaries, to the tune of 10, perhaps more than 10, I am not sure, are prepared only under the guidance of Professor Krishnamurti. So fundamental is his quest that the answers he has discovered have come a long way in helping people in other disciplines of academic and professional activity as well. The Colossus, that is Professor B. H. Krishnamurti in the academic field. He is equally a humanitarian in his endeavors. Early 70s, Applications of linguistics were th thought of being confined more or less to teaching foreign languages or uh, making dictionaries or doing translation. And it is at that time in you know early 70s, I'm talking about 71, 72 like that, Professor Krishnamurti was thinking of applying linguistic principles and theories to help people with hearing impairment. So we set up the entire lab and from 70 to 81, hundreds of children and adults with speech, language and hearing problems received both consultation and therapeutic services from me free of charge. There were many of university employees used to bring their children and they still remember my services in the department. And so Professor Krishnamurti was very proud that uh, linguistics was being 
uh, applied for a social cause and uh, the social relevance of linguistics, uh, you know, he realized. So, um, but uh, what was uh, important at that time was um, I was uh, trained as an audiologist and speech pathologist and I had knowledge about how to handle speech language uh, problems in children and correct them. But my own linguistic background in relation to Telugu was limited because I do not have degrees in linguistics. So all these past three decades, uh, it has been, um, you know, Professor Krishnamurti's publications and especially the modern grammar of Telugu that Professor Krishnamurti published with uh, J.P.L. Gwen, I think in 1985 the book came, um, was published, uh, has been a bible for me in terms of every time I had some doubts about uh, structures and how Telugu structures uh, work in sentences or whatever, I would consult this, uh, this publication and several of his other publications as well. A prolific writer, Professor B. H. Krishnamurti has penned more than 100 international papers and holds the distinction of being the only Indian who has featured more than four times in the prestigious international linguistic journal The Language, an annual magazine published from USA. In recognition of this humongous effort of this giant of an academician, he has been honored with innumerable awards and citations both on the domestic and international platforms, a humble token of appreciation. He was associated with the Sahitya Academy as a fellow and EC. Other eminent personalities seen along with Professor B. H. Krishnamurti here are noted literary giants, Professor U. R. Anantamurti, Professor Chandrasekhar Kambara, Vice President Sahitya Academy, Abburi Chaya Devi, Professor G. V. Subramanyam, Dr. K. V. Ramanachari, IAS, and Sri K. Sachidanandan. During the last part of his life, he displayed keen interest and participated in Sahitya Academy activities. In short, this is Professor Bhadri Raju Krishnamurti for us, the Linguistic Apostle.